Hello, welcome to Meditating the Word. I'm so glad you've joined us on our journey through the Bible in a year. If you'd like a roadmap of where we've been and where we're going, you can download a copy of the reading plan from blueletterbible.com. You'll find a link in the notes. The translation I'm reading from is the World English Bible, but feel free to follow along in your favorite translation. If you haven't subscribed to this podcast yet, why not do that now? Just click on subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. This is day 133. Today we're reading 2 Samuel 11 and 12 and 1 Chronicles 20. The Second Book of Samuel, Chapters 11 and 12. At the return of the year, at the time when kings go out, David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. But David stayed at Jerusalem. At evening, David arose from his bed, and walked on the roof of the king's house. From the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to look at. David sent and inquired after the woman. One said, Isn't this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, Uriah the Hittite's wife? David sent messengers and took her, and she came in to him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent and told David and said, I am with child. David sent to Joab, Send me Uriah the Hittite. Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah had come to him, David asked him how Joab did, and how the people fared, and how the war prospered. David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. Uriah departed out of the king's house, and a gift from the king was sent after him. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and didn't go down to his house. When they had told David, saying, Uriah didn't go down to his house, David said to Uriah, Haven't you come from a journey? Why didn't you go down to your house? Uriah said to David, The ark, Israel, and Judah are staying in tents And my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open field. Shall I then go into my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. David said to Uriah, Stay here today also, and tomorrow I will let you depart. So Uriah stayed in Jerusalem that day and the next day. When David had called him, he ate and drank before him, and he made him drunk. At evening he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his lord, but didn't go down to his house. In the morning David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. He wrote in the letter, saying, Send Uriah to the front of the hottest battle, and retreat from him, that he may be struck and die. When Joab kept watch on the city, he assigned Uriah to the place where he knew that valiant men were. The men of the city went out and fought with Joab. Some of the people fell, even of David's servants, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war, and he commanded the messenger, saying, When you have finished telling all the things concerning the war to the king, it shall be that if the king's wrath arise and he asks you, Why did you go so near to the city to fight? Didn't you know that they would shoot from the wall? Who struck Abimelech, the son of Jerubasheth? Didn't a woman cast an upper millstone on him from the wall so that he died at Thebes? Why then did you go so near the wall? Then you shall say, Your servant, Uriah the Hittite, is also dead. 
So the messenger went and came and showed David all that Joab had sent him for. The messenger said to David, The men prevailed against us and came out to us into the field, and we were on them even to the entrance of the gate. The shooters shot at your servants from off the wall, and some of the king's servants are dead, and your servant Uriah the Hittite is also dead. Then David said to the messenger, Tell Joab, Don't let this thing displease you, for the sword devours one as well as another. Make your battle stronger against the city and overthrow it. Encourage him. When Uriah's wife heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. When the morning was past, David sent and took her home to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. The Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and raised. It grew up together with him and with his children. It ate of his own food and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was like a daughter to him. A traveler came to the rich man, and he didn't want to take of his own flock and of his own herd to prepare for the wayfaring man who had come to him, but took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. David's anger burned hot against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He must restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anointed you king over Israel and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that would have been too little, I would have added to you many more such things. Why have you despised the Lord's word to do that which is evil in his sight? You have struck Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and have taken his wife to be your wife, and have slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your house, because you have despised me and have taken Uriah the Hittite's wife to be your wife. This is what the Lord says, Behold, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he will lie with your wives in the sight of this son. For you did this secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You will not die. However, because by this deed you have given great occasion to the Lord's enemies to blaspheme, the child also who is born to you will surely die. Then Nathan departed to his house. The Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and he was very sick. David therefore begged God for the child, and David fasted, and went in and lay all night on the ground. The elders of his house arose beside him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, and he didn't eat bread with them. On the seventh day, the child died. David's servants were afraid to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke to him, and he didn't listen to our voice, how will he then harm himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, 
David perceived that the child was dead, and David said to his servants, Is the child dead? They said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth, and washed and anointed himself, and changed his clothing, and he came into the Lord's house and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he requested, they set bread before him, and he ate. Then his servants said to him, What is this that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive. But when the child was dead, you rose up and ate bread. He said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who knows whether the Lord will not be gracious to me, that the child may live. But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him, but he will not return to me. David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went into her and lay with her. She bore a son, and he called his name Solomon. The Lord loved him, and he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he named him Jedidiah for the Lord's sake. Now Joab fought against Rabbah, the children of Ammon, and took the royal city. Joab sent messengers to David and said, I have fought against Rabbah. Yes, I have taken the city of waters. Now, therefore, gather the rest of the people together and encamp against the city and take it, lest I take the city and it be called by my name. David gathered all the people together and went to Rabbah and fought against it and took it. He took the crown of their king from off his head, and its weight was a talent of gold, and in it were precious stones, and it was set on David's head. He brought a great quantity of plunder out of the city. He brought out the people who were in it, and put them to work under saws, under iron picks, under axes of iron, and made them go to the brick kiln, and he did so to all the cities of the children of Ammon. Then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. The First Book of Chronicles, Chapter 20 At the time of the return of the year, at the time when kings go out, Joab led out the army and wasted the country of the children of Ammon and came and besieged Rabbah. But David stayed at Jerusalem. Joab struck Rabbah and overthrew it. David took the crown of their king from off his head, and found it to weigh a talent of gold, and there were precious stones in it. It was set on David's head, and he brought very much plunder out of the city. He brought out the people who were in it, and had them cut with saws, with iron picks, and with axes. David did so to all the cities of the children of Ammon. Then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. After this, war arose at Gezer with the Philistines. Then Sibachai, the Hushathite, killed Sipai of the sons of the giant, and they were subdued. Again there was war with the Philistines, and Elhanan, the son of Jair, killed Lami, the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. There was again war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature who had twenty-four fingers and toes, six on each hand and six on each foot. And he also was born to the giant. When he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, David's brother, killed him. These were born to the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Father God, David was a man after your own heart, but he was a man as imperfect in the flesh as anyone else. Instead of fulfilling his call and going to battle, he chose to stay behind, and that started a downward spiral into sin with such a high price. He placed himself outside of your will, Father, which is a dangerous place to be. 
Then he taught us a lesson about rising up and carrying on instead of wallowing in pity over his failure. May we have the same courage to pick ourselves up and move forward when we fail and the wisdom to stay in your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can find Meditating the Word on your favorite podcast platform on YouTube and on Facebook. If you're listening to this on one of the many podcast platforms, you'll find links in the notes to all of our other locations. It's my goal to encourage others to strengthen their Christian walk through daily reading God's Word. You can help by sharing this podcast and by rating and reviewing it. I want to thank you for joining me. I'm praying for you as we journey through the Bible together. Please pray for me and pray for each other. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.